It's Northern California versus Southern California. Number one ranked team versus number two ranked team. The state JC Women's Finals coming to you from Pasadena. The Golden West Rustlers taking on the Delta Mustangs. Stay with us, exciting volleyball action coming up next. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to exciting volleyball action. Andy Mariani, once again, joined by Desiree Nicolau. Glad to bring you this action from Hudden Patterson Gymnasium on the campus of Pasadena City College. It's JC Women's Volleyball Finals. Golden West Rustlers taking on the San Joaquin Delta Mustangs. Desiree, both teams coming into this match undefeated yet they've walked pretty much the same path. That's right, Andy. Both teams come in here 25-0. and 0. They both swept their regionals three games to nothing against their prospective teams. You have the number one and number two in the state doing powerhouses from northern and southern California. The difference is here at the state tournament. Uh, Golden West has had a little more rest time because they've swept both Butte and Cuesta in three games, while Delta took four games to finish off Irvine Valley and five games to finish off Sacramento City. We talked to Coach Marianne Poss, coach of the Delta Mustangs. They've got some key players. Nanette Moosey on the front line is an outstanding player. Lindy Nordcutt, watch for her with number seven wearing the re knee brace, outstanding on serves. Yet the wrestlers, Desiree, they have some fine players of their own. Yeah, I mean, the wrestlers, they have Julie Renfro and Lori Dadelow, both strong. You know, hopefully Lori will be able to stay healthy through this next match. Um, the difference is Delta is up and down, Andy. While Golden West, very steady. If they play their consistent game, it's going to be a great competition. Delta, on the other hand, they are strong in aces, and they are a great serving team. They're working really well. In the quest to match earlier, we got to expect Grace Boyd to really step up for the wrestlers. Yeah, Grace Boyd, she's definitely a strong, strong player. She made All-State, as we discussed earlier. The, uh, today, she was a little slow getting started against Cuesta, but I think tonight, I think she's going to be relaxed. She's ready for the game. It's a thrilling match, a great matchup. Both these teams could face each other in the finals come tomorrow. We will be back for the starting lineups and the start of tonight's exciting game coming up in a couple minutes. This park was filled with vandals, junkies and dealers, carjackers, prostitutes, and gangs that held the neighborhood in fear. But the only crime being committed here is everyone thinking that we're the criminals. Let's face it, everyone judges teenagers on appearances. So why don't we start proving everybody wrong by doing something right? Get involved in crime prevention in your community. Tutor, mentor, volunteer. Call 1-800-722-TEENS to find out what you can do. It's time we're judged by what we do, not how we look. We're back for half, we're back for We're going to be having the introductories, the starting lineups. Both teams have been introduced to this match right now. We'll take a look at the starting lineups and we'll get rolling on that. Let's get the lineups up on the board for the Delta Mustangs. They are coached by Marion Paz. She'll be uh, starting off for the wrestlers. Let's, they are being introduced. Delta, let's take a look at them. Desiree, read us the Let's wrestlers. go with Golden West. We have number seven, Kinsey Ross. Number eight, Natalie Snowden. Number 10, Christina Piccarelli. Number three, Lori Dadelow. Number, number seven. That's by chance Delta. Let's pick that up, Desiree. Seven, Lindy Norcutt for Delta. Number eight, Anya Douglas, middle blocker. Number nine, Heather Gresh, opposite hitter. And number 10, another outstanding player, Katie Lamaster. Let's take a look at the rest of the squads. Back to the wrestlers. 
That's Kinsey Ross have, again. So we got duplication here, Desiree. I think we might just have to pull those lineups up and we'll go to the start of the action. We're ready to go. Delta serving. They're in the black. Golden West wearing green today. Set. And the first point goes to the Mustangs. They jump out early. Once again, Desiree, their offense on the ace attack. Katie Lamaster with the first point. Lamaster will be serving. Squad up, 1-0. Set by Cotran. Outstanding effort by the Rustlers. They get side out. Julie Renfro, 1-0 in favor of the Delta Mustangs. Set by number two. Outstanding effort, Nanette Musi. The master try to get to Musi again. And side out once again for the Mustangs. Looks like early on, Desiree, it's a combination of Lamaster trying to get the ball to Musi. Musi with the serve on the side out. Dadlo, Lori Dadlo out of bounds. Russell's a little rough starting out. Yeah, they seem a little slow right now. And earlier in the season, if you remember, Andy, they were a little bit slow getting off to their starts. And now against the number one team coming from the north, they really need to play strong throughout. Lucy into the net. Opportunity for wrestlers and Coach Gasparian with his first set of substitutions, which he's pretty much utilized in the course of the playoff action. Reagan Wywert's in the serve right now. She is wearing the green, dribbling the ball right now. The wrestlers will be serving left to right. They trail 2-0 early on in this third round action. Number one, Amy Moles, set across court to Northcutt. Set for Snowden. Both teams feeling each other out early in this contest. Ball out of bounds. Point for the wrestlers. 2-1 is the score. Serving for the wrestlers, Reagan Ryworks. We have a little bit of stoppage in play. Both teams, like we mentioned, coming in undefeated in this contest. One from north, one from south. Set cross court. Nice effort on the part of Northcutt. Side I think they out. called a lift on that one. Early on, it looks like this. both teams, like I mentioned, feeling each other out trying to establish some territory. Yeah, I don't think they've come up against each other in any previous games this year, so they definitely, they watched each, they, I'm sure they watched the others play earlier. Only for matches. a few minutes, yeah. we talked to Coach Gasparian early on. They were playing at on. the same time, so it's difficult. Set position, there's Moosey, ball out of bounds. Rustlers, side out, Rustlers. Lori Dalo will be serving for the wrestlers. Very impressive in her game against Cresta. 2-1 is the score. Delta Mustangs in the black lead. Set position, Cotran. Grace Boyd gets it in. Ball kept in play by Lamaster. Cotran, the assist leader in the league, in the state, I should mention. Nice action on behalf of Lindy Northcutt. Great spot on that ball. Effort, outstanding effort by the wrestlers. Reagan Raywitz on the return. It's two all. Lori Dalo with the serve. Northcutt. Try to tap it over. Lucy gets it over the net. Set by Renfro. Cross court, opposite side, Natalie Snowden. Ball still in place. Snowden with the counter. Nice block by Snowden for the point. Rustlers lead 3-2 game one of this third round matchup. You can see right now the difference. We're watching the volleyball earlier in the contest. This is at the game at its finest on the women's level, junior college wise. Nice effort on behalf of Delta. Anya Douglas comes out of the pack and is very effective on what she's doing. So we first hear from Anya Douglas and gets a side out. 3-2 in favor of the Delta, or I should say Golden West Rustlers. Side out once again. Nice hit for the Rustlers. Number 12, Grace Boyd on that hit. 3-2 Rustlers. They lead game one early on. Natalie Snowden serving for the Rustlers. 
They're going left to right. Cross court, nice hit. Ball countered back. Julie Renfro, nice save by Delta. Number 10, LeMaster taking the ball off the ground, but Moosey can't get it this time. Grace Boyd found that open spot and just put the ball down right there. You have to admire Delta for their ability. They've already picking ball up out of the ball. 4-2 for the Rustlers. And an ace. Just poor communication on that play. Delta, they, both girls moved out of the way thinking the other one wants it. Natalie Snowden continues the run for the Rustlers. She was effective in game number two, getting the Rustlers back in their earlier contest against Cuesta. They were down 7-4 in that match. And now she's leading the charge. And there's Snowden once again. Marissa Cotran sets. Julie Renfro, Rustlers back out in front, 5-2. Renfro's made some great hits to start off this game. 6-2, I stand corrected. You know, Andy, it's, it's important to note right now that Golden West is going for their seventh straight title. Uh, That's very important to them. Yeah, it's very important to them. We, you know, we talked to Gasparian earlier. He felt that the girls played a consistent, their game. They came in here and played what they're capable of playing. They very well could be making their seventh title. And the thing that he was impressed of, and also Marianne Paz when you're talking about the Delta side, is both are content with the roles that their players play. They're all well-rounded players. But I personally believe, and you can give me a perspective on this, I believe, I feel the wrestlers probably have more well-rounded players, at least from what I've seen early on. Well, from what we've seen, I mean, the Golden West has a lot of depth in their charge. They have the bench to pull from. All of their girls are strong. You have Julie Renfro, uh, Lori Dadlow, Grace Boyd, mm -hmm. Marissa Cotran, these girls, they're all very good at what they do. Natalie Snowden Natalie with the serve. Snowden. Ball returned back, we're back to action. Side out. Ball coming out to Delta. Katie LeMaster, sorry, Lindy Norcutt, I believe, wearing that knee brace, the distinctive knee brace. She's one of the outstanding ace performers. Look at that, a jump serve. Ball return though, Renfro, we talked about her earlier in the contest. Ball set up, LeMaster, nice effort, kept in play by the wrestlers. Renfro keeps the ball going. Number 12, Euchre keeps the ball in play, a substitute, and Nanette Moosey. All league northern section, along with the outstanding player, I believe it's Katie LeMaster. So the wrestlers know they're gonna have some good competition going against. They lead 6-3, nice jump serve. Norcutt, set by LeMaster. Norcutt keeping in a play. Cotran, cross to Renfro. Renfro, ball digged out by Lucas. Point to the Mustangs. They have now narrowed the margin. They trail 6-4, and Desiree, look at this. We're talking about number seven for the Delta, Lindy Norcutt. Look how far she's jumping in, I mean, that's, Brazilian style, but it looks like it's effective early on. Well, uh, Norcutt, as you mentioned, is one of the top five serving aces. And if you watch her early in the contest, she'll change the rhythm. She'll go from that jump serve and she'll go to a standard serve. So she changes the pace, it's her game, she studies it. But on that instance, side out, Lori Dalo comes through. Substitution in right now, Rebecca Larson, we haven't seen her except for the starting, the early portion of the game. She's entered the contest. The referees today are Mr. Sloat, S-L-O-A-T-E, and as the referee, C. Park is the linesman. Nice effort, and a great shot by Lori Dadalo. Lindy Norcutt hits it cross court. Lori Dadalo sprawled out and gets a corner of the back line. 7-4 Golden West, they lead game one third round action. The winner advances to the championship match tomorrow. Ball into the net. Another point for the wrestlers. Grace Boyd will be doing the serve. Their squad, sorry, that's Reagan Rewerts on, no, it's Grace Boyd. I was right. Nice serve, and that's gotta be a bonus. Grace Boyd effective on her serves. Grace Boyd has been strong with her serves all day. When she played earlier, she was a little tentative up at the front line. I mean, she's still up there for the block, still made some kills, but her serves were very, very consistent. Grace Boyd with once a serve once again. Moosey, nice block up the net by Larson. 
Rebecca Larson, very effective early on. Nice point by Nines Moussi. She does not get down. She had a ball into the net, yet she counters and comes through with a nice side out situation. Score, 9-4 in favor of the Rustlers. They lead. Point to the Mustangs. They are ahead. They are trailing, I should say. Serving for the Mustangs. Number one, Amy Moles. Jennifer Renfro on the return. First action of number four, and a very effective play by Jennifer McClurkin. Jennifer steps up, and she comes through, and she's effective. Nice little run here by the Mustangs. They trail 9-6, but Julie Renfro counters side out Golden West. They lead 9-6. Marissa Cotran effective in game two action against Cuesta. Effective in game two action against Cuesta. Nice round. Set by Renfro. Cotran, Lori Dadlow, nice effort by Lori Dadlow that makes the score now 10-6 in favor of the Rustlers. How important is the first game coming away with it from the perspective of both sides? Well, definitely you want to win this first game morale-wise. These girls, both teams are here to win. They both want to walk away with that title. But for Delta, I've got to imagine they're a little bit tired right now. I mean, they've, they played five games earlier against Sacramento City. Last night, they played four games against Irvine Valley. Golden West finished their games in three, and they were done. Got some rest time. Not to mention the fact that they have a longer drive getting up here, getting themselves acclimated to the facility. The Rustlers, I don't know if the facility was ready by the time that they got up here for any exhibition matches. I would think not. But at least they're familiar with the environment and what's expected of them. They have a couple sophomore players for a year ago who were through this situation. And Julie Renfro, Lori Dadalo, we always talk about Lori, the stabilizing influence on the squad. And she's shown it um, against the game against Cuesta. She had like 11 kills, three serve aces. She's constant, very constant for these girls. Constant, consistent. Versa Cotran doesn't come through. Usually she's pretty reliable. You can count on her for serve action. Marissa loses side out to the Mustangs and one of their ace servers, Katie Lamaster, ready to hit the ball for the Mustangs. There's Julie Renfro once again, a key early on in this contest, her ability to return all the serves of the Mustangs. Moosey, oh, close call. Christina Piccarelli thought that ball, I guess she didn't want to take a chance. It looked like from our angle, we're up high, Desiree, that it was going to go out yeah, of bounds. Yeah, from our angle, it did look like it. But on the court, I mean, she wants to make sure she gets on it, her hand on any ball she can. 11-7 the score. Rustlers in green going left to right. Ball out of bounds. It's another point for Delta. Timeout for the Rustlers and Coach Gasparian. 11-8. Delta comes back, narrows a little bit of the margin. They're a little closer. I mean, they've, they've shown... With both teams have showed what they're capable of. And it's interesting the fact that they really don't have any common opponents. One's from Northern California, Stockton. Cuesta is an oppo is the opponent that the Rustlers took care of earlier on, but they have no common opponent in regards to playing each other. So this first game is very instrumental in figuring out what's going to lay ahead in game two, three, four, or possibly five. Well, as far as Golden West is concerned, I mean, I'm sure that they're hoping to come in here in three. Delta's definitely a tough team. And three games is, is a number that the wrestlers are familiar with. We have to go back. I keep reiterating this to November 5th, the last time that they lost a game. First time out of the blocks, and that was against Irvine. Save attempt, and it hits the roof. Point to Delta. They're on a run. It is now 11-9. And here's where that instrumental serving ability of Katie Lamaster comes into play. Lamaster serving on the far side, right to left, Delta in the black. Narrow the margin, it's 11-9. Snowden, farther back than probably she wants to. Musi on the front line, set by Renfro. 
coming across. Julie Renfro on the opposite side. Nice hit by Moosey. Great dive. Ball knocked over by Northcutt. Set by Cotran. Two laid low. Out of bounds. It looks like side out because the ball hit Delta. So Russell survived that run. Julie Renfro now serving. Tight ball game, game one of this third round match. The winner will advance to the finals on Sunday. Out of bounds. Julie Renfro gains that point, 12-9 Rustlers. The loser, Desiree, it will be a tougher road for them. They have to play an additional game tomorrow at one o'clock. Yeah, they, they will have to play, Andy, again, another game, which means less rest. So when they come into that final match at five o'clock tomorrow, they haven't had any rest time. And that's what Delta does not want. Nice play by Lori Dado in the front of the net. Another point for the Rustlers. They are up 13-9 in game one. The loser of this contest will have to play a one o'clock match against the winner of Shasta, no, San, no, Sacramento, Sacramento City and Santa Barbara who will be playing at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. It's Cotran, Dadlo, cross court to Snowden. Snowden, Moosey keeps it alive. Moles, we have a whistle. Point by the Rustlers. They are one point away from taking this first match. A little bit of breakdown in the last two plays for the Mustangs. Julie ran for a far side in the green for the Rustlers. Cross court to Lucas. Out of bounds. But it was tipped. Break for the Mustangs. Nanette Moosey to serve. She'll be serving in the middle of the court. Her squad down by five, 14-7 in game one. 14-9, stand corrected. Snowden keeps it in play. Nice middle block by Larson. Nice block once again by Larson and Dadlo. Nice tip. Cotran with the set. Dadlo cross court. Moles keeps it alive. Moosey. Moosey cross court. Ball still in play. Nice rally here. Snowed in. Out of bounds. Chuck up another point for the Mustangs. It is now 14-10. Rustlers a little bit getting away from their game. Yeah, I, I don't think the wrestlers are used to the opponent being as strong as Delta is. They haven't been tested earlier in earlier rounds. A big break for the wrestlers. Nanette Moosey hit the ball over the back line. Serve opportunity, substitutions in for the wrestlers. Regan Redwards, we've seen her serve. Trying to finish out this first game. Net violation, that will do it. Game one is in the books. Russell fans on their feet. They come away with a game one victory by a 15 to 10 score. We'll be back with the game two action in a moment. Stay with us. We've got some more exciting action still lying ahead. you this action golden back with the action we're a little bit of momentary delay the start of game two officials are conversing on the far sidelines Desiree gotta be impressed 15 10 coming right out of the block 
It's definitely good for Golden West. They got off to a great start winning that first game, so their momentum's in play right now. Delta's going to have to come back. As we talked about earlier, they're probably a little bit tired, and if they lose today, they're going to be really tired tomorrow. So they definitely want to win, and there's a good possibility, Andy, that we may see both teams come up again for the final match. That's what happens in double elimination. They get brought down to the loser bracket, and then they, the team that goes through that will play again tomorrow. An interesting note to the double elimination format is the team that's lurking in the weeds right now, and that's the Santa Barbara Vizqueros. That's a team that came out of the blocks very lethargic. They lost their opening contest. They were eliminated early on, and after they lost that game, they have bounced back. They were actually eliminated by Sacramento City. They had a, a very slow first game. I saw them today against Cuesta. It was a, it was a good game solid game um, there's a good possibility I mean they're gonna play Sacramento City tomorrow morning at 10 so Andy they could po potentially win that and then whoever loses this will play them at one well, it's sort of ironic it's possible also that Delta could face their rival Sacramento City for the fourth time this year and that one o'clock game so there's still a lot of possibilities going back to the action game two is underway Russell's up ahead side out Nanette Moussi on the attack, and she comes through with side out for the Lady Mustangs. Moussi with the serve. Moussi, two consecutive bad serves. Moussi has to counter that. You cannot have forced errors in a match that's this mag that has this much magnitude. Julie Renfro with the serve. Going right to left. It looks like we had a substitution coming in or a delay of action. One nothing is the score. We have Mr. Lee on the sideline now. It looks like we have an equipment issue or maybe a substitution pattern that he's discussing right now. He's conferring with assistant coach Pamela Busso on the sideline of the Mustangs. The Mustangs are coached by Marion Poss. There's Mr. Lee. I said Mr. Park, I should say. And uh, he's conferring now with uh, Mr. Gasparian. I think we have a substitution situation now that might have been put in question by either assistant coach Pamela Busso, like I mentioned, Sam Cerny, and Marianne Poss, head coach. So Mr. Park is going to go talk to Mr. Sloat, and they're going to confer and see what the situation is. Looks like it could be a substitution issue or an equipment type issue. You have to be uniformed in regards to the equipment that you have in volleyball, and you have to have the proper shoes are very important. You cannot have an advantage because of the shoes. Also, jersey cuts, additional you know, bandaging and taping for the knee pads are very important. So we'll, there's a conversation right now, and it looks like we've got a little bit of confusion on the part of Coach Gasparian. Play will continue without that point. So it's going to be a counter situation where we're starting from scratch pretty much. Julie Renfro serves. Rustlers ahead, one nothing. Lamaster. Nice up by Piccarelli. Outstanding air for Christina Piccarelli. He usually comes and starts a ball game. She'll enter it at the beginning of each contest. Natalie Snowden. Moosey. Ball kept in play by Lucas. Coltran with the set. Laid low. Nice return by Norcutt. Moosey. Side out. Key point. We might not look at it now early at this point in time, whether because of the equipment issue or maybe a late substitution, or we had to have that play start from scratch, could be a factor. Moosey with the serve. Coltran, cross court Larson. Does not use that often on offense. Renfro, set. Coltran, cross court, Snowden. Nice play by Moosey. Ball still in play. Cross court, point to the wrestlers. Net violation. Side out, I should say, to the wrestler. Substitution pattern. One nothing is the score. Substitutions. It's been interesting to note, unlike the playoff games, Reagan Reworks is really, Coach Gasparian is utilizing her skills as a server. Yeah, she's a, she's a very strong server. And another player that we should look at that we haven't really mentioned is Natalie Snowden. She comes up strong, she's always there, she gets the passes, those little balls that come over the net, she's quick, she picks those up. Her hits, she hasn't been making any kills, but she, her hits are strong, they're getting over the net. 
we, we fail to acknowledge her presence we there. Don't, we don't mention her enough because there's so many good players on this squad. We have to try to pass around the wealth, so to speak, make sure everybody gets acknowledged. The Rustlers ahead, 2-0, game two. They took the first game, 15-9. Snowden once again, and it's Natalie Snowden once again. Are you a prophet or what? <laughs> three nothing, three nothing in favor of the Rustlers jumping out ahead in game two. And the pacing for the Rustlers is what they want. They've got a person who they want to serve it. They're bringing in players that'll fit the mode of their squad. A miss hit by Lucas. We talked about this early, we'll rephrase it once again. The depth of the rustlers seems to be coming into play right now. Yeah, they're able to pass that ball around. Everyone on the court has a role. They all work well together. I mean, that's key for this team. It's not uh, superstars out there, it's chemistry, and, and they, they have a lot of it. And they're very unselfish. You cannot speak about how they work to get the ball and spread the ball around. On that particular instance, the ball did go out of bounds, side out, for the Mustangs, San Joaquin Delta Mustangs, based out of Stockton, California. Northern Division of the Commission on Athletics, Junior College, women's volleyball. An undefeated squad, two undefeated teams, both going at it and representing themselves real well. Lori Dadlo, heads up play, noticed that the Mustangs have been coming up on the net, puts it over. 4-0 Rustlers. They took game one, 15-9. Dadlow with the serve. Dadlow set. Grace Boyd finishes it off. Grace comes through. She struggled early on against Cuesta. She had some difficulties in the way she was hitting the ball in that previous game. She just seemed a little tentative. I, I don't know why. It just it wasn't the Grace Boy that we're used to seeing. We talked to Coach Al Gasperi in regards to her, and just maybe she had butterflies in regards to the contest. And she was going against Gwen Bailey, a player that's equal to her size. But she's come out strong, and there she is once again. And you can't miss that smile. It just glows, you know? She comes through and enforces a timeout. Score is 6 nothing Rustlers. Golden West Television Productions, glad to bring you this contest. Game two. Looking for a job? Golden West College can help. Check with the job placement office located inside administration. Hours are Monday through Friday, 9.30 to noon, and 1 p.m. to 3.30. Fridays, 9.30 to 12 noon. Andy Mariani along with Desiree Nicolau, glad to bring you this action hoping to bring you the final contest, which you will see. It could be the Golden West Rustlers against Delta again. It could be the Golden West Rustlers against Sacramento, your hometown. <laughs> or it could be the Golden West Rustlers against Santa, Santa Barbara. Barbara. And that was an interesting match. They played in a tournament, I believe it was October 16th, that went five games. So you cannot count the Vaqueros out. They come from a very good volleyball area. UCSB has an outstanding volleyball program. Maria Marquis, MVP for the Rustlers two years ago, is playing volleyball right now for the Gauchos. Natalie Snowden, back to action. Laymaster, nice effort on the part of Northcutt. Jennifer Lucas will be serving her squad. Delta, Mustangs trailing 6-0. Rustlers won the first game 15-9. The Mustangs in black going left to right. Natalie Snowden, nice. She sort of lurks in the weeds, and then all of a sudden, when you need a big hit, Natalie Snowden is there. She did it at appropriate time. She will be serving right now with that 6-0 lead. And the Rustlers trying to bear down. They realize the importance of how they're facing an undefeated team. Yet the coaches and people who vote have acknowledged them as being the top team. So the level of play helps being in Southern California. And if you notice, Andy, th throughout the tournament, the play has consistently gotten better for Golden West, who they've played. They started off with Butte, then they went to Cuesta, and now Delta. And Delta's a solid team out there. That's the mark of a good team is you're able to play the level of your appointment, bring your game up. Get it up to that point, and now it's a key opportunity, trailing 6-0 for the Mustangs. Their ace, 
Lindy Norcutt to serve. The jump serve, a little strong. Lindy looking at her wrist saying, I just hit the ball a little too hard. Grace Boyd, looks like she will be serving for the Rustlers. They are ahead, 6-0. They won game one, 15-9. Boyd, serve. Norcutt, cross court, Moosey. Nice roll. Snowden, Renfro, Norcutt, Moosey. Seems like those three get the ball more often for Delta. Rustlers keeping it alive. Nice rally here. Cotran with the set. Ball tipped. Point to the Rustlers. Tipped at the net. 7 nothing. Grace Boyd will be serving. Are you surprised by this early quick start, especially in game two? Well, I definitely didn't expect a 7-0 game right now. Opportunity for the Mustangs. Grace Boyd serve far and outside. You, you know, Andy, we, we always talk about what great chemistry there is on the court with Golden West. Their players are outstanding. We we don't emphasize enough, Albert Gasparian is an amazing coach. I mean, he put that combination together of girls out there. He's coached the Golden West for 17 years. He has six conference championships, 10 state championships. He, he just... You can't say enough can't about him. Enough. I mean, you look at his record and you look at his bio, Desiree, and we go back to 19, 19-3. I mean, 7-1 at this point in this contest in game two. Rustlers are ahead. Ball out of bounds and side out. Let's talk about the history, just going back to 93. 27-0, state champs. 94, 25-2, state champs. 95, 24 and 3, 96, 26 and 1, 97, 27 and 1, and 98, 27 and 0, and working on an undefeated season this year. It speaks volumes about this man as an instructor and as a coach. Yeah, the girls, he's very calm when he talks. You know, you see him out there, his presence is felt, but it's in a, a nurturing type of way. And he always means business. That's the nice thing about him. You know, he, I think the players come to a conclusion early on that they can figure out when he means business. I don't know if it's the tone of his voice or his demeanor, yet he's still pretty much consistent. I think athletes appreciate that. If they, you can tell an athlete where they're coming from, the production will come through. I mean, they'll have more respect for you, at least definitely as a person, as a coach. Lori Dadelow, Rustlers leading 8-1. They get side out. Julie Renfro will be serving. We're coming to you from Hutton Patterson Gymnasium on the campus of Pasadena City College. Third round action. Nice effort by Moosey. 8-1 at this point. The Rustlers in green still lead. Delta in black, Nanette Moosey will be serving all state Northern Conference performer. Marissa Cotran, nice by Rebecca Larson once again. And Rebecca gets rewarded for her nice kill by getting sent to the bench. And that once again reiterates how important the depth and the quality of players are on the squad. Rebecca Larson, her specialty is being up front. Reagan's great server, great in the backcourt. They, they need to do those changes. And there's an opportunity right there for the Mustangs. Nice hit. We got a substitution for the Mustangs. The ball was knocked out by Norcutt. Off, I believe, Lori Dadlo. Serve now for San Joaquin. It's Jennifer McClurkin. Julie Renfro with a dig. Lori Dalo playing on that injured foot. It doesn't look injured. A point for the Mustangs. 8-2 is the score. Game number two. Golden West Rustlers in the green. Victorious in game one. The winner of this match will advance to the championship finals on Sunday, December 5th. Nice effort, Grace Boyd. Knocks the ball right into Anya Douglas, who couldn't adjust to it. Side out for the Rustlers. Lori Dadalo will be serving. Substitution in for Delta. Sarah Carey in the contest for Jennifer McClurkin. We're at a point in this contest where the tenacity of Delta is going to have to come through. And we just saw it. Anya Douglas makes a nice effort. 8-2. Side out to the Mustangs. Serving is Jennifer Lucas for the black-clad Mustangs. 
set Cotran cross court. Snowden didn't quite get there. Ball saved by Laymaster. Lemaster Cotran. Grace Boyd. They have a nice chemistry. It comes up big time. Side out, Rustlers. Seems like a favorite play of theirs today is Cotran getting the ball and Boyd cutting back behind her with the spike. Opportunity for Snowden. The master, great block by Grace Boyd. She just went up strong for that. I think Grace Boyd is back to the game that we're used to seeing her play. Maybe she's a slow starter. Maybe she has to sleep late. You know, she has to sleep maybe till about 11 and pick up her game after that. I and mean, we can ask her about it down road. She definitely was not up to Park Cuesta, but she's living up to all her league or state qualifications. Coming out as a freshman, all state. Very impressive for the freshman out of Marina High School. Julie Renfro, nice block. Anya Douglas, side out, Mustangs. A crucial point in time in this contest, down 9-2, trying to get some level of respectability. 9-2 at this time, level of respectability where you can still try to get yourself back in this contest. And they have players that are capable of doing it. Dadlo, cross court, Renfro. Nice save by Carey. Cotran, where's that play again? This time, Grace Boyd misses on the hit. 9-3 at this point in time. Golden West Rustlers trying to get to another finals. They are two games away from reaching their ultimate goal, another championship game in the women's JC California State Finals. Brought to you by Hyundai. Grace Boyd redeems herself on that nice effort. Side out with the kill. Grace Boyd will be serving. Been very effective up at this point throughout the tournament and her capabilities to serve. Boyd with the serve. The master can't quite reach it. Grace Boyd, 10-3 for the Rustlers. Timeout by the Delta Mustangs. 10-3, Rustlers. Golden West looking for another state championship. Take psychology courses online. Work assignments at, at your own hours. Place and speed every week. Call 714-895-8790 for more information. 10-3 at this point in time. Golden West Rustlers lead. Andy Mariani along with Desiree Nicolau. The Rustlers looking to get to the final game. Not knowing this opponent yet not worrying about the opponent, pretty much just taking care of their own business, being responsible of what they do on the court. The Golden West definitely plays their game when they come out on the court. No matter who they're playing, they're, they're still on track with how they play, and they're showing that tonight against Delta. I don't know if uh, Coach Gasparian uh, is an admirer of Coach John Wood in UCLA. I know that he did get his undergraduate degree at UCLA, but Coach Wooden would always not, he wouldn't even scout the other team. He said, if we take care of our business, we have the players, we're instructed in fundamentals, we'll succeed. And the success it is, Julie Renfro on the kill, knocks down the net, Moosey, make it 11-3 Rustlers. Rustler fans on their feet, knowing how important this game two is. Grace Boyd with the serve. Nice block, Rebecca Larson. And if you notice, Golden West is strong on the blocks. I haven't seen a lot from Delta as far as blocks are concerned, but Golden West is up strong at the net every single time. And blocking can demoralize a team. If you're effective on the up front line, it makes a big difference in what you can do or can't do. Ball kept live by LeMaster. Set cross court, Renfro. Nice block by Anya. Douglas, side out for the Delta Mustangs. Substitutions, 12-3 is our score. Coming out is Anya Douglas and Sarah Carey. In the contest is number one, Amy Moles has just re-entered. Moles to serve. Down 12-3, game two, Rustlers. Golden West took game one, 15-9. Nice block by Julie Renfro. Rebecca Larson, side out, Rustlers. 
Marissa Cotran will be serving. Or is it Christina Piccarelli? Cotran with the serve, 12-3, game two. New player also, Euchre, Adrienne Euchre, in for the Delta Mustangs, and she contributed on that particular play. Side out to Delta. Serving is Katie Lamaster, trailing 12-3. Lamaster, top five in the state in aces. Cotran, day low. Ball, miss hit by Northcutt, still kept in play. Snowden, cross court to Renfro. Front of the net, nice save by Julie Renfro, sprawling to keep it down. Renfro again. Cross court, Lamaster. Oh, Christina Piccarelli on an extended roll. Renfro finishes it out. Outstanding efforts by Christina Piccarelli. Sprawled all the way across the floor. 12-3 side out for the Rustlers. Christina has 198 digs on the season, Andy. And I that think. one was just as crucial and just as important as any dig she's come up with this season. 12-3 score. Block in front by Rebecca Larson. Dadelow tips it over. Heads up play by Lori Dadelow. She saw the opening and took advantage of it. Third. Team three rustlers, game two. Julie Renfro trying to finish this game two out. Net Moosey, cross court to Lucas. Lucas punches it, miss hits it. One point away from the rustlers. 14 three rustlers ahead. Julie Renfro trying to finish off game two. Third round action against the undefeated Delta Mustangs. Lucas out of bounds. That takes game two, 15-3. Rustlers win game one, 15-9. They are in complete control with a victory tonight. One more win, they will go to the finals. Stay with us, we will bring you game three in a moment. information about how you can help stop we are back Andy Mariani along with Desiree Nicolau we are going to game number three the Golden West Rustlers ahead two nothing in this contest they are ahead at this particular time trying to wrap it up we were just talking at the break between Desiree and I. We were the dominance of the wrestlers. We didn't mention in the pregame we might have bypassed it. If you're talking in competition with the three playoff games, and if they pull this game out tonight, you're talking 66 straight wins. Yeah, that, Andy, that's unbelievable. I, for a team to come out, Delta, we're talking about the number two team in the state, and at this point in time, it looks like Golden West, if they play like they've been playing, can finish them off in three. The Rustlers are dominating at this particular time. The Mustangs, wearing the black, coming out right now for game three, are reeling, trying to regroup under Coach Marianne Paz, trying to get themselves together. They were steamrolling over every bit of their competition up until this point. Then they ran into this buzzsaw that wears the green and black. Rustler Sam, it's, the Golden it's West Rustlers. funny, as I was sitting in the stands earlier watching some of the games, and I heard people talking about Golden West. The, the other players talking about Golden West, the one quote I heard repeatedly was, they're just awesome. And Andy, that's what they're showing tonight. 
It speaks for itself. They took game one, 15-9. They took game two, 15-3. And we're just at the start of game number three. Opportunity for the Mustangs. And that was number eight, Anya Douglas, who's had her moments tonight and has been effective helping the Mustangs stay in this contest. They've got to be a little bit demoralized losing the first two games. They came out strong, both teams feeling each other out. But it's the overall, all-around play of the wrestlers that have made the difference up until this point. Cotran, Renfro, set, Moosey, not probably where she wants to be on the return. Cross court to Renfro, nice block by the Mustangs. Number eight, Douglas, a nice effort by Renfro. Delta didn't even move for that ball. They were flat on their feet. These girls look tired to me, Andy. From watching them earlier and watching them now, they look tired. One nothing, the Delta Mustangs at this particular time. But there's the rustlers. Right now, Delta's one, breaking one. down, Andy. There is poor communication, poor communication in the back, poor communication in the front. They're kind of falling apart. They need to regroup. They need to refocus. I, I might want to take a little time out just to tell these girls, hey, get your head back in it. Well, definitely Coach Marianne Paz had them in the huddle more. She used, utilized every second of her timeout situation. She kept them on the, by the bench for the majority of that timeout period. And we have an error right there where Anya Douglas, who just made an outstanding play to gain the Mustangs, their first point, comes up with a mental error, hits the ball into the net. Rustlers lead now in game three, two to one. And Desiree, talking about this tournament, going in, you and I, and reviewing the tournament, we had these all these different expectations looking in. And, that, and when you're talking about double elimination, we talked about early on that Santa Barbara would be a force. And then I go and watch Santa Barbara play last night against Sacramento City, who had six losses coming into this tournament, and they were flat. They got eliminated in three straight games. Yet, Santa Barbara now has regrouped, gotten themselves together, and now they're on the verge of possibly getting themselves setting up. 3-1 at this particular time. Andy, as you were talking about Santa Barbara, they're not Today, they were not the same team that they were last night. And maybe with double elimination, the, the thought process could be in this, is that anybody could win. A team might not be on their best. We talked about basketball and the NC2A games. Double elimination just doesn't work. 3-2 at this particular time in favor of the Rustlers. They are hanging tough. The Mustangs will be serving Lucas with the serve. Jennifer Lucas, ball tipped over, Rebecca Larson. And we're getting back to your point. We talked this over between games with Coach Al Gasparian. If Duke plays Indiana, this was how he paraphrased it, and if Indiana wins on the last second shot, in double elimination, they're going to have to play another game no matter what Indiana did to earn that victory. And he's been preaching to the choir trying to get this to ch get changed, but I think it comes dollars and cents. Well, you very well could look the score right now, Golden West, three. Three, two, three, two in favor of the Rustlers. They are ahead. They lead the game. They lead the contest 2-0. They won game one, 15-9, and game two, 15-3. Nice effort by Natalie Snowden. Let's get back to your point of, in regards to the double elimination. Is it dollars and cents when you're coming down to it? Still 3-2 with the score. It's still dollars and cents when you talk about it. What do you mean by that, Andy? Well, in regards to the extra games bring more dollars in, in regards to fan base and people, extra people coming in for extra games. There's the effort with the score 3-2. Let, let you get back to your point. Nice effort on the part of Lucas or Anya Douglas. 4 2 is the score. Rustlers ahead at this particular point in time. Lori Dalo will be serving. Douglas struggling. Another miss hit into the net. Let's finish out that point. Is it dollars and cents? I really don't think so, Andy. I think in the way that they have it structured right now, they're really thinking that any one of these teams can win. They want to make sure that. The number one team wins it all. 
So, they, so if someone has a bad game, like Santa Barbara had a bad game against Sacramento City, but yet they came back today and were a completely different team against Cuesta, they're, they're looking that that could possibly happen. Back to the action. 5-2. I'm satisfied with that answer. Russell's are on a roll. I still think personally it's dollars and cents. <laughs> You're probably defending the COA, and they're probably not going to tell you otherwise. <laughs> we can ask the sponsors about that. Delta will be serving. The Delta Mustangs, they trail 5-2 in this game three. Rustlers win game one, 15-9. Game two, 15-3. Trying to finish out this third round match. Ball was almost out of bounds. Yeah, that one came pretty high on Reagan, so I'm sure if she would have moved out of the way, it would have gone right out. Jennifer McClurkin with the hit. 5-3 is the score right now. Delta just gained a point, trying to get back in game number three. Snowden. Hit by 12, Euchre. A little bit of play on the part of Delta. They're regrouping at this point in time. LeMaster, relentless Reagan Rewerts. Northcutt, finish by LeMaster. A nice run, timeout, Al Gasparian. That narrows this game three margin. The Rustlers lead 5-4. Start the millennium physically fit. Cardiovascular training, circuit weight training, and Nautilus strength training are offered at Golden West. Call 714-895-8333 for information on classes starting January 31st, 2000. Let's recap this tournament up to this point in time. Right now where we're at is we're in the third round match. Both of these squads are undefeated going this match. In fact, they're both undefeated for the year. The loser will drop down to the loser's bracket and play a one o'clock match to face the winner of Santa Barbara and Sacramento City who plays at 10 o'clock Sunday morning. Winner, of course, will advance to the Sunday evening final. Nice effort, Grace Boyd off the bench. Impact felt immediately. Natalie Snowden will be serving. The Rustlers still lead 5-4. Snowden with the serve. Backside, miss hit by number seven, Lindy Norcutt. And even though she's a quality player, she's had a couple difficulties with the miss hit. Well, that, you know, that was a left, Andy. So, she, you know, she needed to pass that ball. I'm not seeing her, the team, I mean, they're staying strong this game right now. They, they seem to have gotten a little bit more momentum, but they don't look up to the caliber of Golden West. They have not been able to get on a roll. 6-4, they still trail. Substitutions. Coach Paz tried to bring in a player that just left the game, Adrian Euchre, who's trying to instill a little bit of a spark in this squad. To some effect, they still trail 6-4. Lori Dadelo. LeMaster. Moosey. LeMaster could not come up with it. Grace Boyd will serve 6-4. Rustlers, they lead game three. Grace Boyd, number 12, serving left to right. And Amy Moeller, outstanding effort. Lori Dadelo. The combination of Dadelo and Julie Ramfro, Natalie Snowden, the list goes on and on. The master block and then I don't mention Rebecca Larson, and once again, Rebecca Larson comes through with a great block. 8-4, Rustler's on a roll. Grace Boy to serve. Nice deep serve, Amy Moles. Into the net, chuck up another point for the Rustlers. That makes it 9-4. The Rustlers, six points away from taking this contest getting themselves to the championship match. Lucas, Cotran has to fight for the net. She wanted to set it, the ball was too far. Julie Renfro, Moosey returns it. Up for Larson, big time, Rebecca Larson. Two consecutive plays, comes through. Timeout, Marianne Poss and the Delta Mustang. Yeah, they definitely needed that timeout, Andy. Campus tours can be arranged by contacting the Golden West Outreach Office at 
8144, Mondays through Fridays, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Group and individual tours available. What do you do if you're Coach Marion Poss at this particular time? You're trailing 10-4. You lost game one, 15-9. You got pushed around game two, 15-3, yet you're still in the tournament. She needs to give them a little pep talk. These girls, if you look at the difference of energy levels on the court, the morale for Delta is down. Golden West is feeling strong. Their smiles. They're happy to be out there on the court, and they're playing their game. Efforts are showing it. Grace Boyd with the serve. Out of bounds, a miss hit by Moles. And Makes it 11-4. Amy Moles didn't even move. It's like she just kind of stood there. I don't know what could have possibly been going through her head at that point, but it definitely wasn't focused. So you don't give credit to Grace Boyd on the serve? Because that was a returnable ball. Grace Boyd has a great serve. I mean, we've established that. She's a great serve. And a great all the player is Julie Renfro. Make it 12-4 at this point. The wrestlers are three points away from getting to the championship game. Grace Boyd, outstanding run for the wrestlers right now. She's scored about five consecutive yeah. points. Yeah, I believe it's five. Boyd with the serve. Moosey, cross court to Lucas, into the net. And it's just a matter of time for the Mustangs. This is not 1966 for the classic Mustangs. They're struggling right now. Moosey, but still breathing. Nice, outstanding play by Nanette Moosey. They need to do that now, 13-4. I mean, it's getting close here, Andy. Too little, too late. I think what broke them is the rustlers, which they had a tendency to do early on in the year, came out slow, but not in tournament play. Cross court. Larson, Lamaster, cross court to Northcutt. 